I'm doing some additional amplifier testing using the Analog Discovery 2 and the Syncor PA81. You may recall that uh, at the, the first amp testing I used a Panasonic and then I did a Sony in, uh, in a little follow-on. But I realized that one of the things I had not done with the Sony was complete some of the tests. Uh, for example, on the screen is the spectrum analyzer with a one kilohertz sine wave, or I'm sorry, a square wave, being fed through the, uh, the Sony uh, amplifier. And now um, I'm using a square wave just to show you what it looks like if you do have uh, harmonics. Now, of course, this is the fundamental of kilohertz. This is the third harmonic, three kilohertz. And this, of course, is the uh, fifth harmonic, five kilohertz, and so on. Now I'm going to go to just a sine wave. And when the averaging finishes, I've got it set to average 10 counts, uh, that is 10 sweeps. You see now, you have a, a very clean one kilohertz fundamental and no harmonics uh, that are shown. Now I'm using uh, linear dB averaging on the uh, spectrum analyzer, but basically if you had a lot of harmonics, you would see something like this. That's a square wave. The second thing that I want to do is show you the other channel. So I'm going to turn on channel 2, which is the right channel. This is the left channel. This is the right channel. And I'm going to now turn off the left channel and do the same thing. Something I did not show before. You should test, of course, both channels in a stereo amplifier. And if you're doing a surround sound system, you should test uh, the left and right surround sound channels. Uh, you should also test the subwoofer channel. And finally, if you're using a 7.2 system, you should check the left and right mid channels. That is the, uh, uh, what some people call the left shoulder, right shoulder, uh, as opposed to the, the two rear. Normally in a surround sound system, you have left and right front, left and right rear, and then a subwoofer. That would be called a 5.1 system. If you had two subwoofers, that would be a 5.2 system. And then if you had shoulder speakers, that is center uh, left and right uh, in, the, uh, in the center, that is between the front speakers and the rear speakers, that would be called a 7.1 or 0.2 depending on how many subwoofers you have. And with subwoofers, normally the 7.1 systems simply combine the signals from the left and right channels into one subwoofer output. So uh, here now is channel, the right channel, the right front channel uh, of this. Now I've just got it set for stereo, so I'm not testing two. And then you see as we go to a sine wave, the harmonics disappear showing us that we have a very clean amplifier. Now, a little later, uh, I'm going to raise the output. In fact, let me do that right now. 10 watts is more than enough output to fill the average room. In fact, uh, if you are playing an amplifier with, with a true 10 watts RMS in the left channel and the right channel, uh, you've got a pretty intense environment. I'm now going to turn off the spectrum analyzer and turn on the oscilloscopes and then I'm going to go to the square wave and there you see one of the things I was having trouble with uh, in the last uh, segment on this Sony was the uh, scope not triggering properly on the square wave. Well, there you see it's triggering quite well. What was actually going on is I had a bad uh, speaker wire 
in the in the left channel and that's the channel I was trying to trigger on so what was happening is that the uh, as I turned the volume up the uh, the signal was basically uh, breaking up or cutting out in and out because of the uh, connections inside it turns out it was inside the wire inside the insulation so I've replaced that wire and that was one of the reasons why I decided to make this new video is to show you that this Sony has a pretty good square wave response when you drive it uh, properly and terminate it with a good 8 ohm dummy load. So I think that's enough on the, the Sony itself. I got some questions about the PA81 as by Syncor. This is a power amplifier analyzer and the uh, real reason that I have this one, I found it, uh, actually I bought it on eBay, it was badly damaged, apparently it had been dropped and uh, some stuff had been broken inside as well as a uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the banana plugs here and some of the other stuff. I was able to repair it and uh, restore the interior back to original specs and calibrate it and so on. This is a couple of years ago. But the real reason I bought it was not only because it was a really low price unit, but because it pairs with this uh, Sencor SG80, which is something that I used to use quite a bit. This is an FM and also AM, but I just used it for FM. Stereo, analyzer, sweep generator, tuner. Uh, it pretty much does everything that I ever needed for uh, FM tuners. Uh, and it works with this PA81. I primarily use the PA81 as a dummy load and also to measure some voltages and things like that. It has some other features that I'll talk about, but uh, basically the uh, I wouldn't have bought the analyzer if it weren't for the fact that I got it for under $50 and uh, because it didn't work and it was in really bad shape and I kind of put it all uh, back together again. I had to replace some connectors. Well, anyway, long story. Uh, but what I would like to do is show you a few of its features because I may use it from time to time in the future and if you watch some other videos uh, you'll at least have a kind of overview of how this uh, how this unit works. The first thing to notice is that it has a, a switch here which is designed to set the functions. It's currently set to, uh, um, let's see, I guess dB RMS volts. Let's set it to RMS watts. Uh, <clears throat> that way the meters won't be as distracting. But it measures watts, it measures volts, it measures dBm, that is dB relative to a milliwatt. It also measures dB prog, which means dB programmable. In other words, you can program the reference. It doesn't have to be a milliwatt. It can be anything you want to set it to. Then up here in the yellow range, it has the same thing. That is RMS volts, dB relative to a milliwatt, and dB relative to a programmable reference. On the far right, in the blue area, same thing, RMS volts, dBm, dB programmable, and then also DC volts. And the blue is the external input. So let me show you, let me show you what that is. On the far left, you see the speaker input, which you can do with banana jacks or with wires. These are five-way binding posts, in other words. Left uh, next to that is the left audio line input, and normally you put in. The, the standard level for a line level is a volt. The, uh, then the left channel external input, and the external input is the one that allows you to do things like DC volts. These are essentially the same thing except you can do DC volts on this one. And of course it has a BNC connector instead of a phono, uh, phono jack. Next to that is a scope output that allows you to connect a scope. Now at the present time, I just have the scope connected to the, uh, 
the speaker across the speaker terminals and that's because I was having trouble with those speaker wires that I talked about so I've now fixed that and so I can move that VNC connector over here to the scope output uh, here then this is a chassis ground power on and off switch a headphone jack and then repeats the uh, the external inputs for the right channel and uh, I'm sorry the scope output for the right channel the external inputs for the right channel and the line input for the right channel followed by of course the dummy load for the, the speaker dummy load on the right channel in addition to those measurement features it also has some nice functions that uh, including the ability to insert IHF filters in the input. And an IHF filter, IHF stands for Institute for High Fidelity. And the, uh, you can insert either no filters over there or a band pass filter, a low pass and two high pass, I'm sorry, uh, a high pass and two low pass filters. The first low pass filter cuts off at 15 kilohertz, the second at 30. And the reason this one cuts off at 30 is if you have ever had uh, clock noise in a, in a CD or compact disc player, you know that the, uh, the clock frequency is between 15 and, and 30 kilohertz. So you need the uh, 30 kilohertz high pass cutoff if you're going to be looking for uh, CD clock noise. Then over here you have the dummy load selector that allows you to uh, select which, what uh, type of dummy load you use. And finally over here is the monitor. there's a station that I'm listening to. It just allows you to listen to the quality of the audio. So I hope that little overview of the PA81 will help people understand when I use it in the future to measure some things. And perhaps also at some point in the future I may go through some, uh, some tuner check out in alignment. Uh, you don't need that as much anymore. Most of the modern solid state stuff has ceramic filters that are pre-tuned and so on. So the need for the ability to check and align IF amplifiers and front ends and so on is not as great as it was, but it's still useful to have it as a way to kind of do an overall performance check on an FM tuner. So at any rate, I hope you enjoyed all of this and that it's been useful in some way. The uh, I have now resolved the issues that arose either during the first video or during the second video. Uh, so if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Uh, otherwise, I think it's time now for me to move on to something beyond amplifier testing.